Hello all and welcome. This is Jennifer. Glad you're here. So today I'm sharing with you how to create a platform pop-up card. This is a fun and very unique card design that pops up when you take it out of the envelope and is great to put on display. The best thing about this card design is that you can use it along with any small or medium stamps or dies that you may have. Now, I will say you do need a specialty die set for this. I usually try to do videos that don't require a specialty set, but in this case, I think it is so good and versatile that I wanted to share it with you. Now let's look at a completed card before we get started. The flattened card fits in a five by seven envelope and when it comes out, you can see it starts to pop up and all you have to do is press in the bottom and then you have this really fun platform pop-up that sits on display nicely. Let's get started with this example. Now this is the platform pop-up die set that I used for all of these cards and it's from Lawn Fawn. The nice thing is it comes with the platform die pop-ups, the two dies that you see on the right. Those are what you need to make any platform pop-up card. All of the dies on the left on the white paper there, those are add-ons that work well with it. You don't have to use those, but they make it easier to create a little pop-up scene. I mostly just use the two dies on the right, but I like that they include extras in it, making it more bang for your buck. Now these dies create this platform. I just made it out of some scrap cardstock just as a practice, but that's the platform and you can add lots of things on it. And I'll show three different examples today. They also have a add-on die set available that allows you to create like a piece that sits on the back so you can adhere things to it. I actually only use this on my last card today, so stay tuned for that. But this also includes some add-on dies that really allow you to decorate this even more. Now, I really recommend that you use some scrap cardstock and do a practice assembly of this pop-up platform. Once you do it once, it's really easy to do again. So I did that with some scrap cardstock, some purple and green, so I have some practice. Now I'll show you how to create it. To create the platform pop-up, you need to die cut two of these large pieces. I think they look like heads with shoulders. You need to cut two of those, and there are many score lines on it. They're very easy to see. The die creates the score lines. All I'm doing is reinforcing those score lines, folding them back each time. So I end up with a piece that's kind of curved a little bit. You'll also see there is a little slot cut in each that's also done by the die. Now, the thing I really like about Lawn Fawn is they make their dies very easy to assemble. So it's very easy to see those score lines and fold where you need to fold. So I have those two pieces folded. Now you need three of these T pieces. And they also have a little score line at the bottom of the T. And you'll want to reinforce the fold along those score lines on each. So you need two of those big head and shoulders and then three of the T pieces. I kept mine very clean and simple today, but you could stamp and decorate these however you want. I think it's best to now add your double-sided tape wherever it's needed. There are two spots on these head pieces where you need to put double-sided tape. And I'm doing little scribble lines where they go. And then there's one place on these T pieces where you need to put double-sided tape. And you only need to do so on two. So you can see where I'm scribbling, we're going to put some strong adhesive. I like using Lawn Fawn's quarter inch double-sided tape. You could use whatever you have that you trust will hold. And you put that on this little bottom flap here and then on this little side flap. That's kind of on the shoulders of this piece. Again, wherever I put those scribble lines is where you put the adhesive. And I'll do this on both of the pieces. I will also put the double-sided tape on the bottom flap of two of those T's. So remember how we folded the little flap on the bottom of this? I'll put adhesive on that flap on two of the T's. The third T I've set aside, we'll come back to that later. Okay, so now we have our double-sided tape positioned on all of our pieces and we can assemble. I just think it's easier to have that tape there and ready to go. We will now create the platform in two halves that are exactly the same, and then we'll glue them together. So let's start with the first half. For the first half, you need one head and shoulders piece and one of the T's. We're gonna flip the head and shoulders piece over so the adhesive is facing down. And we'll do the same with the T, so the adhesive flap is facing down. We'll slide the T into that slot. 
and we'll fold along the first uh, fold line that's in the green piece that's closest to you, and we'll press that down, making sure that T piece is pulled all the way tight up into the slot. Then we will fold back the little flap where there's some adhesive, remove the release paper from that, and then fold it back down and press it. So that will grab hold there and we have our first piece of adhesive in place. Now we fold along the next flap on the green piece. So we'll just press this down. There we go. And then we will take that little flap up there, remove the release paper from that adhesive, and then just fold it back tuck it under and press. So now the first half of our platform is formed. It looks a little funny, but I promise it all works out in the end. We can set this one aside and do the other half of the platform pop-up in the exact same way. So I have my other head and shoulders piece, the green one, and the other T, which is white. I'll flip them both over and then slide the T into that little cr a hole there, pull it tight so the tab of that is right up against there, flip that flap over, remove the release paper from the tape and press it down. Then we can fold along the next score line of the head and shoulders piece and now remove the release paper from that bigger tab there. Once we have that removed, we can just tuck it under and press it down. Now we have two pieces that are exactly the same. Remember, we still have that third white T piece. Now there's that score line that we created that little folded flap this time we're going to cut along that score line. So we have a shorter T here. This time we're putting adhesive right down the center of the T. So I put scribble lines where the adhesive will go and I'll put the double-sided tape along that, trim off the excess. So there's just on the base of that T, some double-sided tape. We can remove the release paper from it, flatten one of our platform halves and line this up so that it touches the bottom of the green platform there and the side of those T's lines up. I know it seems weird, but I promise that's the hardest part of the whole process. Now on the other half of the platform, we need to do one thing, and that is add some double-sided tape to the front face of it. So this face here, I'm putting two pieces of double-sided tape. You could do three if you wanted to, but I think two is plenty. So now we can adhere these two together. I promise once you've done this once, it's really easy to repeat this process for more. Okay, so now let's connect the two. Remember that adhesive we put on the flaps of each? Just remove the release paper from one of them. So I'm just gonna remove it from the end here. I find using a craft knife or a paper piercer helps to remove that release paper. I line them up end to end, and then I fold that flap over so that it connects the two. You can see the completed scallop line along the top. Okay, now we can close this, forming our single platform pop-up. We remove the release paper from that double-sided tape on the main face here, and I just fold this over, making sure that the faces meet up. So you can see how I just line those up, lining up the scallop across the top edge also, and there we have it connected. The last step of everything is to remove the release paper from this other little flap and connect the two ends. Now we have the basic platform pop-up function, and you can add whatever you want to this. The fun of this is once you get this mechanism, you can use whatever stamps and dies you have, as long as it fits into an envelope. Now those white pieces that are sticking up, I'm gonna call those tabs. Those tabs, you can add onto them anything you want. Anything you glue to those tabs will pop up when you press the bottom of the platform. So you have lots of layers here, so you can create a fun scene. We'll do that middle tab in a moment. We're gonna start with the first and the third tab, the two outside white tabs. To create a little border to go on those, you need to cut them about three inches wide. Now remember, there are dies in the set that will cut little borders for this. I wanted to do my own thing. And if you want to create your own little borders to go on those tabs, you want them about three inches wide. I used a much older die set. This is the Simple Stitched Hillside Borders from Lawn Fawn. And I thought it'd be fun to have three little hills along those three tabs. So this one is cut to the right width, but way too tall. So I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. This will get glued onto that back tab. Again, you can glue whatever you want on there. 
So now onto the front of that white tab that's in the back. I'm putting some liquid adhesive. I do feel liquid adhesive is better here, so you can wiggle it until it's in just the right place. And I'll put the border on the front of that tab. Once I hold it there and I'm sure it's dry, I always like to test and make sure that everything closes or flattens and pops up without any problems. So I'll just test it there, works just fine. Now the front tab, I'm not gonna put a hill on that. Instead, later I'll add a sentiment. But for the middle tab, it needs to be a little bit wider because the platform is wider there. This time I have a piece of cardstock that is three and three quarter inches wide and I'll use another one of the hill borders. Then I will put some adhesive, liquid adhesive again, on the front of that middle white tab and glue our little border onto it. Again, there are dies included in the set that you could use to create these little border pieces to decorate each tab. I will use those on my last example, but I thought I'd show you a variety. Now for the backdrop of this, I'm using an older Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitch Sun. It's the one that you see over there on the right in my hand. I die cut that from yellow and orange scrap cardstock, and I assembled it together. I want this to be along the back of my platform pop-up, but I need to make sure that it fits in my envelope. This is a five by seven envelope that I have on my desk. I'm using it as a guide. I'm gonna tuck this sun in the back of the pop-up, and I wanna make sure that it'll still fit in the envelope. Notice it's a little too tall, so I need to cut a little bit off the bottom of my sun. If you wanted to, you could use that platform add-on die that I showed you earlier that creates walls on the back of your platform pop-up. I'll use that on my last card, but here I just wanted that sun back there. So I cut a little bit off the bottom of my sun, and then I will put glue along the back of my platform pop-up, so right there on that little ledge there, and tuck my sun into that. That way this will stick out of the top of the platform pop-up. You'll see it when the card is flattened and when it pops up. So this is the fun thing. Some of it you'll see when it's flattened. Some of it won't show until you pop up the platform. A reminder, you can add whatever you want here as long as you can still flatten the pop-up and as long as it still fits into an envelope like it does here. So it's always good to stop and test it. Now to add little images to this, I first thought I would use the stamp set on the left. I thought I'd still show it to you. And I will use the balloon on the stamp set to the right. That stamp set to the left is new from Lawn Fawn. It is super cute. It's called Berry Special. I thought I'd use that top mouse in the stamp set, but changed my mind. This is a great set and would work well with the platform pop-up. Anything with smaller images is perfect. Again, I will use that heart-shaped balloon from this Lawn Fawn set that came out, uh, I think, in the last release. I just thought that would be fun to have in the hands of lots of little people when our card pops up. Now, the little people I chose are from the new Lawn Fawn Tiny Spring Friends stamp set. It's the one over there on the left. Lots of adorable little images. Lawn Fawn has a lot of small images like this that are great for creating a scene in this platform pop-up. So I stamped a bunch, colored them quickly with Copic markers, also stamped some balloons, colored those too, and now I'm using the coordinating dies to cut them out. I thought it'd be fun to have a rainbow of people holding a rainbow of heart balloons. So I cut them all out with the coordinating dies and glued the balloons onto the people. So I had one die cut to work with. You can see the example over there on the right. I'm now going to glue those to the two green hills that I added. So that's the middle tab there and the back tab. So I'm gonna kind of alternate between the two. I always make sure that I can flatten the card with no problem and pop it back up with no problem. I'm putting the glue on the front of those little borders, adding the die cuts there, always making sure I can close it and pop it back up. You can also have things stick out kind of to the left if you want, as long as you can flatten it, and it'll still fit in the envelope. So I scattered these kind of going front and back between those two little tabs there, or those two little hillside borders, so that I have a lot of dimension in the end. Some of these images you can see when it's flattened, but not many. So when it pops up, you see much more, and it's a fun surprise. So there we have all of our little people and balloons glued in place. Now for a sentiment, I thought I'd want to include it so that it only shows when you pop it up. So it's a fun surprise. The tab on the front was a little too long for my sentiment strip, so I trimmed the tab shorter. 
Then I put adhesive on the front of it and added my little Sending Sunshine sentiment strip. That is from the Lawn Fawn stamp set that you see over there on the left. You could use any sentiment you want here, even something die cut. The nice thing about this is when it flattens, you won't see that sentiment at all. Now you could do so much to decorate that green platform. You could do so much. There are so many dies included in the set, but I decided to keep it plain. One thing I do like to do is stamp push here on the bottom of the platform so that in case the person doesn't really know what to do with it when it comes out, it'll be clear with the push here sentiment. Now this does kind of pop up on its own a little bit when you take it out of the envelope. So I feel like it's pretty obvious and I tested it on my 15 year old son, my test subject, and he had no problem without the push here. But if you wanna give a little help, you can always stamp that right on the bottom of the front platform. So I just stamped that with green so it was kind of tone on tone and that will help the recipient out a bit. Now again, I kept this platform very plain. All I decided to do was add thin cardstock white strips along the front and the black. So I flattened it and glued the strips down. Once it's dry, I can pop it back up. But remember, that die set comes with many things you can use to decorate this. But I love the idea having it simple when it's flattened and comes out of the envelope. And then when you push it up, everything shows and that's where it shines. So if you want to, you could decorate the platform even more. And finally, I added three white stitched cloud die cuts using the older Lawn Fawn Spring Showers die set. I just thought that added a little more interest to the card and created kind of a complete scene. Here you can see how it flattens nicely to fit into a five by seven envelope. And as soon as you take it out, it kind of pops up. You see the push here. You just press that bottom and it pops and kind of locks in place. You can feel it kind of snap there. And now you have this fun platform pop-up that is perfect to put on display. Now, as for a personal sentiment, you could either write it on the bottom or the back of the platform. So you can see how creating the platform itself allows you to add whatever die cuts you want to it. Here I went super cutesy with lots of rainbow and sunshine fun. In my next one, I'll do something floral. And then in my third example, I'll do something super simple. And it easily flattens by pushing the center down and look at how it flattens without much bulk to put through the mail. Let's move on to our second example and look at the completed card first. It flattens nicely to go in the envelope and then you can just press the bottom to pop it up to be a fun display of spring flowers. I loved how when this one's flat, all you see is the word happy, but then when you pop it up, you see the word spring. So this one, I used lots of little flower and leaf die cuts, just showing that you don't have to really go for a cutesy look, you can go for whatever look you want. Now I'm using two new die sets for this to create all of those flowers. You could use whatever flower die cuts you want. This on the left is the new Lawn Fawn Spring Flowers Backdrop Die. Love this background window die. It cuts for an A2 card with faux stitching, but I'll just be using the little flowers. And then over on the right, we have the Magic Iris Floral Wreath Die. And I'll use the flowers and leaves from that too. I also broke out the older Lawn Fawn Tropical Leaves die just because there are more small leaves in this and I could die cut more at once just to save time. Now for the cardstock, I'm using the new Lawn Fawn Textured Canvas cardstock. These come in packs of colors with different shades in each pack. And I love this idea. So for example, here is the pink pack and check out how there's kind of an ombre of color there, which I think is very helpful when trying to pick colors, especially for a little collection like we're doing. In some of the packs, it's just different shades. So you can see here in the teals, you have different colors. Here we have the greens. It's nice to have the different shades that you can either use together or separately. This does have a soft texture to it, which I think is really beautiful. Now, one of my favorite packs is the yellow because yellows can often be tough to find ones that work well together. Now it's time to create the platform pop-up. Now I'm not going to go through the process again because it's exactly like I did before to create the two halves of the platform. Before we put them together, I am going to change it. So I'm put together already the two halves of the platform. Now for the middle T, remember how there's that third white T I used before? This time I made it from acetate, so it's clear. And then the third one, remember you cut off that little bottom flap where there's a score line. 
This one gets glued between the two platform pop-ups. Now again, in my first example, I did this in white. Here I'm doing it in clear for this middle pop-up piece. Now I put the adhesive right down the center and I put it right along the bottom of this one platform pop-up half, making sure that I line it up there with the tab behind it. So now I have two green tabs and then the middle tab is clear. So you can do these in whatever colors of cardstock you want. I like the idea of this being clear because I will add the happy spring to it and you won't be able to see that it's attached. Okay, now on the other half of the platform pop-up, I am putting my strong double-sided tape, lining up the two ends and connecting them with that adhesive on the tab. And then we will continue to assemble this just like we did before. So this piece here is just like we did in the first example, but instead of using white for those three T pieces, I used green and a piece of clear acetate. So you can do this however you want. Here I wanted to make sure you didn't see the little tabs, so that's why I chose the matching green and also the clear. Okay, so now let's add the happy spring to that middle tab, which is the clear one. So I'm just putting little drops of liquid adhesive at the bottom of my letters, and I'll press that to the front of that clear tab. I made this large word die cut from the Lawn Fawn Happy Spring die. By the way, when I'm assembling on those little tabs, it's sometimes helpful to press the platform up so it pops up in the center instead of down, as you can see here. So I just press it up so the pop-up goes up. It's not supposed to really do that, but when you're assembling, it's very helpful. So there you can see how this looks when it's closed, and then it just pops up. So now we are just going to add a bunch of flowers around it, and there is no right or wrong way to do this. The only thing, again, that you want to make sure is that whatever you add will close, that you can pop it down and flatten it, and it won't get in the way. I found that most things I added didn't hinder it at all. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Remember, you could use that platform add-on piece. You can see that green die cut in the middle and glue your flowers to that. And then you can be sure it will work okay. But I kind of like the idea of having these see-through flowers and leaves attached to the back. So I glued a bunch of flowers and leaves together here, kind of creating a web of flowers and leaves. And I glued it to the back edge or back ledge of our platform pop-up. So it kind of creates a backdrop of those flowers and leaves. And then I just kind of keep adding to it so I can fill it out up as much as I want. Now keep in mind, this is going in a really wide envelope. So you could add a lot to the sides, but I decided just to kind of add it to that backdrop making sure that I didn't add anything too high that would get in the way of fitting in that five by seven envelope. So that's why I like to put the envelope behind what I'm creating so I can use it as a guide, as a reference of how far out I can put my die cuts. So I glued a bunch of little die cuts on that back piece and now it's time to add some to the front tab. Remember, I still have two other tabs, the one in the front of the happy spring and the one behind it. Now my tab on the front I thought was a little too long. I just wanted to add a few flowers and leaves to it. I trimmed it down a little bit. Now I noticed I am off screen for putting these on here. I was kind of close to my body trying to add these. I'm sorry about that. But really all I'm doing is putting adhesive on the front of that front tab and adding some leaves and flowers. Really it's about filling in the space however you want. I do find it best to do your die cutting and assembly of all your flowers and leaves, which you can see up there on the top of my screen. Do a bunch of that first so that they're ready to go and all you have to do is glue them onto your pop-up. Now here I'm gluing some to that third tab, the one that's right behind Happy Spring. And I did glue a few flowers and leaves to the word Happy Spring itself. Now you can put as much or as little as you want in here. I did kind of a medium amount of flowers. Now I will have leftover flowers, uh, little die cuts that I can use on a future project too. It's always best to create too much instead of too little. And if you want to see what you can do with a bunch of little die cuts like this, uh, I will link here to my last video where I showed how to make a see-through card with those leftovers. Okay, so I continued to add as many flowers as I wanted here, and that's it. I didn't want to, again, add too much to the platform itself. I like leaving that simple, but by all means, you can add whatever you want. 
I again decided to add a thin strip of cardstock along the top edge, and then I used the dies included in the platform pop-up die set to create that little peach bow that you see there. This is one of the things I really appreciate about Lawn Fawn die sets. They include a lot of little dies that allow you to do finishing touches like this bow. And I think that is really helpful. All right, here's a look at the completed card. It flattens to go in a five by seven envelope and then you can just press up the bottom and there you have your pop-up platform. Now this is one that I think is excellent to put on display. I will just write my personal message either on the bottom or on the back of it, but you could always just put a little note with it and then sign your name to the back of this. I kept my platform and the tabs either green or clear so that the colors of the flowers would really pop out against it. Another thing to keep in mind is if you want little things kind of floating up from it, just use little thin strips of acetate, clear acetate, and that will allow you to have things look like they're kind of floating there. All right, let's move on to a very simple version of this platform pop-up. Now, this one I made for my son, so I thought I'd keep it pretty simple and kind of playful. So if you're looking to start with a platform pop-up design, this might be a good one for you. I used the add-on to create that little blue sky backdrop and I added a little scene onto that and then just one goat to the center. We joke a lot about that expression, you're the goat or the greatest of all time. So I thought this would be fun to give him and he can put it on his desk in his room. I have already created the platform pop-up doing the exact same process I did in the first card in this video. This time I made my tees green so the entire piece is green. Now this is the piece that you can cut with the add-on die set. I just cut it from a blue piece of cardstock and I'm putting adhesive along the bottom back edge of it. And then I just slide that into the platform pop-up while it's kind of flattened a bit. It just kind of pops right in there. Then what I like to do is press it down and just hold it there for a few minutes to make sure it's secure. Now we can add anything to this that we want. Remember in the platform pop-up die set, there were little borders you could use to decorate these tabs. Well, this time I used the grass border. So you can see I have a bunch of grass borders cut there. These fit the front and the back tabs nicely. And then I just put two together to cover the wider middle tab. And remember, you could do whatever borders you want on these. For the front and back tab, you need about three inches wide. And for this middle tab, you need about three and three quarter inches wide. So on the middle tab here, you can see I am adding two overlapping border die cuts to it. It just made it easier and faster to do. Okay, now I did decide to skip the grass on that first tab so I could add my sentiment there. Now for this, I'm using the new Lawn Fawn You Goat This stamp set. I think this is adorable, and it has the You're the Greatest of All Time or You Are the Goat that I thought would be fun to use with my son. They talk about that in baseball all the time, and he's going through baseball tryouts right now, and it's going really well. Uh, so I thought it would be fun to give him this card. Okay, so I stamped, colored, and cut out one of the little goats, and I added that to the middle tier right along the grass. I also used the Lawn Fawn Spring Showers die set that I showed you earlier to create a sun and also some clouds. And I'm just gluing those to that little blue sky backdrop. So you can add anything to this. Think about it. You could do some fun inking technique on all of these pieces before you assemble. You could use pattern paper. You could stamp on them. You could do whatever you want. So here I am cutting the tab, the front tab, a little bit shorter. It's a little bit wide once again, and I'm adding my sentiment strip right to the front of that. For some reason, that's my favorite place to add it. Now notice I pushed it through so everything popped up in the center instead of down, just so I could easily add onto the tab. Again, I find popping it up in the center helps when you're assembling, and all you have to do is press it back down. Now for the platform itself, like the front face of it, again, I kept it very simple. This time I stamped UR onto a white cardstock strip and glued that across the front. And then I glued another along the back. So this just kind of looks like a wrap around the top edge. For me, I'd like to keep this simple, but you could decorate it however you want. And remember that the die set comes with lots of dies to do that decorating. 
All right, so here we have the card as it comes out of the envelope. You just press the bottom and there you have your platform pop up. I did not stamp press here on the bottom of this one or the last one because I know the recipients who are getting it know how to do this platform pop up. But remember, you can always stamp or write press in here right on that little bottom. Now, this is a very simple design, but sometimes I think that is best, especially for this. So there you have it, three very different versions of the platform pop-up interactive card. This is so much fun to make. If you like interactive cards and want to make better use of all your small images, this is definitely something to check out. I have everything linked below in my YouTube description to multiple shopping sources, or you can just take a look around. Also, you can go to my blog where I have photos of all the cards. You can bookmark cards, bookmark videos, and even print cards for future reference. Here at the end, I have a couple other related videos. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a wonderful day, and I'll be back very soon.